Good evening. Thank you for coming to the public meeting here at the Ridgerest Community Meeting um, over for the Crest incident. Uh, first off, we're going to go over a little bit of the safety procedures here in this building. Uh, this is not to worry you or anything like that. I do have to want to make sure that everybody is safe in case if we have another situation. Knock on wood, we do not have that, and Mother Nature is going with us and keeping us safe out of, the, out of everything else. So, number one, exiting. Our first exit is over here right behind you on my right, your left. We do have Kern County Sheriff's Department right there. They are going to be the ones with their hands in the air in case something happens. Everybody please stand up and then we'll go out in a nice orderly fashion. We don't want anybody rushing, dumping chairs over the ground and tripping people. Please go in an orderly, orderly fashion. On my left, your right, there's another exit right there. We'll have another Sheriff's Department right there with their hands up, escorting you where to go. The third one is on our left. You're continuing your, my left, your right. We have SO on that side. They will be escorting you on there. We also have exiting right here, but our panel will be exiting that end along with people on the side right here. So again, if we have an exit corridor that we can keep open as much as we can, I know it's pretty tight in here, but please, we need to make sure that we are safe in case something happens. Okay, so now that, that's out of the way. So good, good evening, my name is Anthony Romero. I am the public information officer for the Crest incident and with captain with the Kern County Fire Department. Number one, I appreciate you all being here on this situation. I know this has been a long, long week and some mental portions of it is very long. Um, today we do have some speakers here from the Ridgecrest Police Department. We also have speakers here from the Kern County Fire Department. We have uh, the Naval Base um, speaker here, a representative from the San Bernardino PIO will be here, Cal OES PIO. Uh, we also have Red Red Cross PIO. Um, we have uh, Vod and Marley's Mutz here to talk about any type of stress relief, including the current behavioral health. We have representatives from the Kern County Supervisors District 1's office. We have uh, Assemblyman Fong here. Uh, representative from Shannon Grove's office, Congressman McCarthy's representative, and then lastly, we'll have our mayor to speak to close out the session. Again, thank you again for coming over. On 7-4-19, the city of Ridgecrest experienced a magnitude of a 6.4 earthquake that opened up the eyes of this community. The very next day, a magnitude of a 7.1 hit and then terrified the community. The City of Ridgecrest and Kern County Fire Department immediately went into action and started checking on the community and the infrastructures. With those incidents that happened, the Kern County Emergency Communication Center took in a call volume which exceeded over 1,000 calls within those days. Ridgecrest Police Department received 911. Their system immediately dropped. It went down. Kern County ECC took over the calls. Within that call, they took over all 911, non-911 calls, all 911 calls. Ridgecrest PD worked hard trying to get this system back up to, up to speed. With those numbers that called to our Kern County Emergency um, Center, we had over 2,956 calls from January 1st through the 4th for 911. We had over 2,266 calls for non-911 calls. Outbound calls that were going out were 2,845. From July 4th through July 6th, Ridgecrest Police Department got their system back up. Once they received their system back up, they received over 500 calls plus till this day. So today, we are looking into recovering the, the city of Ridgecrest. That is our, our time now. The incident that happened before, now we're in the recovery mode. We will have our speakers speak on our courses of actions to get the community back up and running and to provide a safe atmosphere. So our first speaker today that I'd like to have come up is from the Ridgecrest Police Department, Chief Jed McLaughlin.
Easy, ladies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I had to have him up here. Um, it's, it's not for you, it's for me. Um, he's been with me the whole time, and uh, I owe him uh, a huge gratitude, so uh, that's why he's right here. So uh, this guy's awesome. So uh, <coughs> where do we go from here? Uh, this has been, I know, a difficult time for each and every one of you. It had to be. It was a difficult time for myself, my family, each and every one of the officers standing around this room, their families. So I know that it was a difficult time for each one of you. So we've done what we can do to protect you from the criminal element and I think we've done a good job in doing that. Uh, sorry for the words, but uh, we had an idiot come in from out of town and uh, take something from one of ours that wasn't his. We'll catch him. Um, we had one last night that decided they were going to take something. We got the property back. We'll catch that one. So two. In two major incidents, not bad. Um, the men and women wearing the different colored uniforms, it doesn't matter what color we wear. They were here to protect each and every one of you. They will continue to do so until we can do it on our own. And uh, so just know that the dedicated men and women around this room wearing whatever color that they're wearing are here for you still, and they will be until we no longer need them to help us. So that will continue. <laughs> and that will continue, and we will scale it as we need to. And uh, I thank each and every agency that has come to help us to help our community. Um, I want to help, I want to thank uh, the fire departments that came, especially our own. Uh, can you stand different? Yeah, thank you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the Kern County Fire Department, what an amazing group of uh, men and women uh, sitting in the, a room with these guys, uh, many of them every, well, for days on end. Uh, many times I'm sure that room smelled because we didn't shower for quite some time, but uh, uh, these guys are a great group of guys. The Cal OES guys were in that same room with us, and uh, if I forget somebody, I apologize, but, uh, you know, just know that I'm thinking of you guys. Uh, we had fire departments from all over the place here. Strike teams here that consist of 29 people that brought resources that just in case something drastic and devastating were to happen so that those tools were here to get our people out of that situation as quickly as possible to save as many lives as possible should that occur. So the resources that we brought in here for the preparation of something bigger was to come uh, was amazing. And to watch that system occur and to be a part of that, uh, be that small part of it, was just uh, incredible. So to the fire departments, to Kern, Kern County Fire Department especially, to the group that's working behind the scenes in Bakersfield that you guys don't get to see from OES to Georgiana Armstrong and her group, Kern County uh, Board of Supervisors over there. There's just so many people to, uh, to thank that uh, we don't even get to see them, so uh, unless we make them come over here, uh, 
and you, we all know that's a one-way road, you know, over there. So uh, Cal OES, uh, they have people over here, over there, over here. So just amazing. So we need to give those people just our gratitude. <laughs> And I know you guys are probably sick of seeing me, but uh, you know th this is this is important for for our community to uh, to know who was involved in this. Um, and I know you saw the cars, the the amount of of law enforcement presence from all the different agencies around the the county, our California Highway Patrol, when uh, the governor was here the other day, and I was. Uh, jokingly with the uh, commissioner of the highway patrol I was like yeah I look out in the lobby and there's like a hundred of them no there was 68 but uh, <laughs> uh, so it was literally the amount of people that got here so quickly was uh, incredible uh, from the political standpoint all of the politicians that were involved in helping us through this whole process the calls that were made to make everything happen and, and get here was just incredible. From uh, getting calls from the White House, um, I thought somebody was punking me, but uh, uh, from uh, Vince Fong's office to uh, everybody, the governor's office to uh, Senator Grove's office to Kevin McCarthy's office, it's just been incredible, the, the assistance that we were offered, and you know what, we took it. We took it, and you know what, I don't care that we took it, because you know what, we were prepared for it. And uh, if it were to happen right now, we're prepared. So we'll uh, scale back when we need to, and as we can see, those thought after the 6-4 that it was done, but uh, uh, I guess God said it wasn't, so uh, he wanted to give us something else. So where do we go from here? Um, well, let's try to uh, start recovering now. And uh, so now it's our job to not only protect you, but now try to uh, help you to uh, get back to some uh, normal way of life. So now my job is to uh, see how I can do that to uh, get you back to uh, being okay with going back into your house, being okay with going back inside a building, being okay going back to work. So all of these people up here are here for you today to get you there, to get you know that it's safe to go back in that building, know that Look, I'm glad that you thought it was safe to be able to sleep out in your front yard, sleep in your car. That makes me feel good that you had your faith in us that you could do that. But now I need you to get back in your house. <laughs> okay? Sorry, but, you know. But not only that, for your own safety, but now I'm concerned about where we're at inside. Uh, PTSD is a real thing. Um, and we're all suffering from it right now. Whether you think you're not, you We are. So we have teams coming in that uh, will help us with that. And it doesn't make, there will be no judgment and it doesn't matter about talking to somebody and getting that extra push to uh, get some help and get, uh, get back to our normal way of life and our normal community. So uh, please utilize what we're bringing in for us to make us a better community. Uh, so we also need to know what has happened to your property um, so in, we can better help you and to see what other further assistance we can get you with. 
Reynolds or a Mr. Strand, we're going to need more budget. <laughs> so we've set up a, an email uh, account. It's called quakedamage at ridgecrest-ca.gov. Don't, you don't have to remember this. I'll tell you later. Um, we want you to email the city with what has happened to your property. Um, or if you're not comfortable with email, um, we've, we've also set up a hotline, and that number is 760-499-5083, where you can call in and talk to somebody and tell them what's wrong, what has happened to your house or property, and they will be able to tell you what, uh, what services, and if the, and our public works director, Bard, will be up here later to tell you what, uh, what they're going to be offering as far as inspections should you need that uh, to feel safe to go back into your home. <clears throat> now on uh, some positive notes, um, the hospital is 100% uh, back open for business, so that's awesome. Um, we got a report from the airport uh, this morning, and uh, <laughs> the number of aircraft that they have serviced the past few days was huge. This thing <laughs> was uh, is Caesar in here? What's going on with this? Um, was huge. The uh, the number of media aircraft that they serviced was incredible, not to mention the aircraft that were brought in to support you. Uh, most of you probably didn't know that uh, on the ground out there were two Black Hawk helicopters if needed for rescue at uh, any time. Um, then af after the 7-1, uh, those aircraft were later used, I believe, for uh, checking the faults that uh, for the uh, see what happened uh, the earth shook so the other thing that we're going to do um, that we're going to work with Kern County and Cal OES in the coming days there'll be a local assistance center it will probably be right here at the Kermagee Center and that will have several groups in there available to you and they will it will be various groups from insurance to contractors board to various groups that anything you need you can come in there and ask them how you can get something for to fix your property or from uh, emotional wellness to insurance to whatever the case may be uh -huh. It will be here and located at that center. So we will definitely get that out, put out the word, uh, definitely on the PD's Facebook page, which each and every one of you should be on by now. And uh, we will also put it over the radio and... Uh, any other services, and I'm sure the school district would also push it for us, so, and uh, we'll ask the base too as well. So I know you guys have probably heard this if you've uh, watched the news uh, lately. This is our time for preparation now for the next one. So please, please prepare. I'm horrible at that myself. Um, None of us were probably prepared for this. Maybe a couple people overfell. Um, <laughs> so water, have supplies, and the rule is at least 72 hours because sometimes that might take, it might take us 72 hours to get to you. It depends on how bad it is. So uh, he's looking at me through the side of his eyes, so I'm probably talking too much. Um, Thank you, and if you need anything from us, you'll know we'll be there, and uh, 
make sure that uh, you thank the emergency service personnel and uh, they did an awesome job. Thank you, Chief. So just to kind of go along a little bit that I didn't get to touch on, we are going to have questions and answers. Um, so basically what's going to happen is the question and answers is for you. Anybody from the public, will, it's for you. Media portions for, media portions for questions and answers will be on a one-on-one -on -one basis after, after the meeting. So the way that's going to work once we're done is we'll have one person with a, a microphone Whenever you want to answer a question, please raise your hand. We'll get to you. And then after that, you'll go ahead and answer your question on whichever panel right here that's going to be able to answer will answer for you. We won't take a lot of it, but we'll answer as much as we can. And then after that, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one basis, and you can talk to everybody on a one-on-one -on -one deal. Okay. Our second uh, speaker is uh, Battalion Chief uh, Desanio Mitchell and, uh, from Kern County Fire Department. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I appreciate that you guys are here today. Uh, I know the people of Ridgecrest care about their city, uh, and, and we love that you guys give us so much support. I know the fire department's spoiled with you guys. You guys treat us very well, uh, and it's just an honor and a privilege to uh, serve the city of Ridgecrest. Uh, we have a great relationship uh, with the city of Ridgecrest, and um, we know we're loved out here, and, and we appreciate uh, the public every time we're on our incidents. Uh, showing us that, res that, that love, that gratitude. Uh, I know we were challenged uh, on 7-5 with that 7-1. Um, and our guys and gals uh, were out there to serve you guys, uh, respond to emergencies. And on that uh, evening, uh, I, I know our guys stepped up. I know it was very uh, anxious for you. There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, I know that people are on edge. Uh, we don't exactly, you know, uh, know when is the next one going to happen. Uh, I would say that the Kern County Fire Department, we're prepared. We're ready to respond. We have uh, transitioned our resources back into its normal operating um, status. Uh, we also have some uh, standing by resources just in case something else happens to pop up. But I want the public to know that um, our guys and gals, uh, the night responded. Uh, they were challenged. Uh, and we were faced with a situation that was very dynamic and evolving. Uh, part of that was stressful uh, as, as well for us, not only for you guys, but uh, at the same time, I, I do want to say that it, it's very um, rewarding in the aspect of when you get to see uh, a department respond to an incident uh, challenged with natural disaster-like capabilities and then watch that department and its supporting entities come together and then ultimately help you in, in the process. Um, I want to thank the city of Richcrest uh, department, the chief. Uh, it was great working with him and his staff. Uh, I know this, uh, your police chief, uh, law enforcement out here, uh, they did a great job uh, responding, also assisting with uh, our operation and the fire service. Uh, I'd like to thank OES. OES is very important in our uh, op out here. We had a great support from uh, mutual aid for local contract counties and also Office of Emergency Services. It wasn't a one-man or one-woman job. Uh, we depended heavily upon uh, the assistance of others. So uh, now, moving forward, uh, we're starting to release those resources, trying to return to a, back, a state back of normalcy. Uh, I know that's kind of difficult, uh, the, the type of um, aftershocks have been having, these, but I know that this city has done a great job at also providing a lot of local services for you. Uh, you're going to hear of opportunities for you guys to capitalize on that. I would hope that you guys would utilize those services. It's for you. It's to assist you to get back to a state of normalcy and, and feeling better and more confident in what life has to hold. Um, I would say that uh, I think we have a lot of things to be grateful for. I know this was a, a pretty tremendously difficult situation, but I would say that a lot of great things happened, and I think there's a lot of things to be thankful for. Um, we do have a system set up so we can hopefully get uh, you know your houses, your, your personal items and those restored, uh, get you guys back into your houses, uh, get you to a state of being um, inside, like the chief had stated, and, and back to a, a place of um, 
feeling comfortable again because I know everyone's on edge. Uh, a lot of great people are going to talk about their certain uh, services for you. I hope you guys take it upon it to capitalize on that. Um, the plan moving forward for Kern County Fire is we're ready to respond. Uh, we've been ready to respond since the start of the incident, and as going as forth, uh, if you need us, uh, our guys will respond as always. Uh, we love the city of Ridgecrest. We're ready to go, and our guys will step up to any situation we are presented with. Uh, moving forward, uh, I would say that I know that it was this was a traumatic event. Uh, we do have behavioral health and those types of support uh, here for you. Uh, not only do people suffer minor physical injuries, but it is a behavioral side to this. So I hope you guys take advantage of that. Uh, talk if you need to. That assists with the recovery process of getting through this and moving on. Uh, I wanted to say it's an honor and a privilege to have uh, been working on this incident. Uh, this is my home battalion. I take pride in this place. I know every man and woman who works at the Kern County Fire Department wants to do our best to make sure you guys are protected and safe. So as someone who works here, every, almost every, sh every shift I'm here I work, I take pride in this place. I appreciate the city, and I know Kern County Fire Department will do its best in making sure you guys are protected moving forward. So if you ever need anything else from us, you know how to get a hold of us, and ultimately, call 911. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Next would be um, Helen Hayes from the Naval Base. Hello everyone, I'm Helen Hazi from Naval Air Weapon Station, China Lake. Unfortunately, the commanding officer of the base, Captain Dale, was not able to be here he wished. He does appreciate the opportunity to be with the community and address any concerns. But at this point, the reconstitution and the cleanup phase of the base uh, took all his time and attention this afternoon, so we apologize for that. We appreciate the community and be able to work with you. I will be taking any concerns or any questions you have. Uh, at this point, we can inform that for the base, only mission essential personnel have access. So uh, please follow us on Facebook and updates will be done there. Thank you. From the representative of San Bernardino PIO, David Wirt. Good afternoon, everyone. I apologize for the, uh, the casual appearance. I shave and wear a suit tomorrow, I promise, but it was about a two and a half hour drive. I found out about the, the meeting about two and a half hours in advance. I figured the priority should be to get in the car and start moving, so thank you. First, I want to thank uh, the good people of Kern County and uh, City of Ridgecrest for putting this together, this is, uh, this is great. They've been great neighbors, and we are thankful for that, and it's good to see so many people here. H how many folks do we have here from the, the Trona area, the Trona Valley, and, okay, good, good, a lot of folks. Good to see you coming out. Uh, our priority since, uh, since this event happened has been to try to meet the vital needs of the community as best we can, start focusing on getting life as close to normal again as we can. Uh, I understand it's, uh, you know, after one of these events, there's a, you can't help but feel a little isolated, especially when you're a couple of hundred miles from the county seat. Oh, new mic, okay. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. All right, thank you, Chief. Uh, anyways, but, be assured, in, in, in the county seat where our emergency operations center, there are people who are literally working around the clock. I know because the other night I stayed up all night watching them to make sure they were working around the clock uh, to find out what's going on in the community, to direct resources to the community, and, uh, and get those needs met. Uh, I understand we've been doing a lot of road work out there. I think we might have only one road closure uh, left in the community. Uh, now, some of those roads aren't quite what they used to be, but at least they're passable, which is good news, especially for those of you who, uh, you know, rely on getting to Ridgecrest for a lot of your services. Uh, we are, uh, uh, we have been uh, bringing a lot of bottled water into the community. As you know, that uh, the community is under a boil water only uh, order uh, because the water system is down. Uh, we don't have information on when the water system will be back up. We understand the, uh, the damage is extensive. It's going to take some time, and then even after that, you're going to have to boil water for a little bit longer until the, the pipes flush through. 
but uh, as long as it's necessary, we will be bringing a lot of bottled water into the community, making it available to people. Uh, we have a, a distribution center at Trona High School that's open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, where we are distributing that water to everyone who needs it. Uh, I'd like to thank people who are donating water. We are getting so many water donations, it's, uh, it's just been amazing, in addition to the water that the county is buying uh, on our own. Uh, also, at that distribution center, I'm not sure if it started today, but uh, if not, it will start tomorrow. We will have counselors on hand. As the chief said, there is no way to go through what all of you have gone through without feeling a little bit different than you did before. Uh, unfortunately, in San Bernardino County, we have a lot of experience dealing with disasters. This is the first big quake that we've had, at least in the time that I've been with the county, uh, but we have a lot of fires. We, of course, had a terrorist attack a few years ago. Uh, unfortunately, we see people more often than we want to who have been through something like this. And uh, uh, there is one thing these events have in common, and that is uh, you don't quite feel like yourself for a while. And there's nothing wrong with that. So there will be counselors at the distribution center. Please talk to someone if you're not quite feeling the way that you should. Uh, that's what they're there for. They're professionals. And uh, sometimes the best thing to do is talk. Uh, I understand the American Red Cross was also at the high school at the distribution center uh, with some food today. And we're hoping that that continues. Now, as far as other needs are concerned, Ah, okay, I have that. Uh, we understand that uh, uh, a lot of people in Trona rely on services here in Ridgecrest for their daily lives, shopping, things like that. During this disaster, for those of you who have been displaced, who need meals, the American Red Cross Evacuation Center is here in Ridgecrest, which, when you're feeling out of sorts, might seem like a long way away. Starting tomorrow, we have arranged for daily free transportation for those of you who can't get here uh, easily, who don't have friends who can take you. Thank you. I am really glad now that I made sure that they got this fixed before 4 o'clock today. <laughs> Didn't want to get up here without that. Uh, so beginning tomorrow at uh, 10 in the morning, there will be daily shuttle service from the high school to Ridgecrest for people who need to get here in town to visit the evacuation center. Uh, so uh, that's an example. One thing that is common for, for every incident that we have in San Bernardino County, and as I've said in my 20 years as the county's PIO, we have had a lot. No matter how much we think the next one's going to be like the last one, no matter how much we think we've learned, we always encountered things we haven't encountered before, needs that we did not anticipate. And we pride ourselves on jumping on those right away. Of course, learning, for, learning from those for the, for the next time doesn't help you today. Uh, but we want you to know that we are listening. If there are needs, we need to hear about them. We need to hear from you. Uh, it has been great. A lot of people have been messaging us on our Facebook page, County of San Bernardino. Do not hesitate to do that. If I'm not watching it 24-7, Felisa Cardona, the deputy PIO, is on there 24-7. As a matter of fact, she usually beats me in responding to Facebook posts. Uh, we're also on Twitter. And uh, we, uh, uh, I know social media is not the answer for everyone, especially in Trona. I understand connectivity is not the greatest out there. I understand the signal is not the greatest. I understand a lot of people don't have time for that social media monkey business. And that's fine. It's America. Do what you want. But... That is the best way for us to get out information. If you are on social media, we are updating it constantly. Felisa was just updating it right now while we were standing here as we were getting new information from our Emergency Operations Center on services. So if you don't have social media, you don't want to be bothered with that, you probably know someone who does. Before the earthquake, it was that person walking around looking at their phone all the time, and you thought, isn't that ridiculous? That's the person, if you don't have social media, that's the person who's going to know first what's going on and what's available to you. Now, if there are still needs that aren't being met, we do want to hear about them. You don't have to own a computer or have the internet, or have internet service. Uh, call us, 909-356-3998. That's the number directly into our emergency operations center. As I mentioned, there are a team of people there probably about 40 people at any one time, around the clock, 24-7, who want to know what you need. 
and they want to get out there and deliver it to you. Uh, I don't think there's anything I'm leaving out, but if there is, I will be here later. Felisa will be here later. She writes faster than I do. And, uh, you know, we want to come back to San Bernardino with a list of things that you need so we can get them addressed. Uh, I just want to end by thanking all of you uh, for your bravery and for your teamwork. I've spent the better part of the day yesterday in Trona, and it was... It was amazing how that community had come together, how I saw people helping each other. Uh, I could feel that even when there isn't a disaster, before there was an earthquake, uh, Trona is very much uh, a team. And uh, uh, that, more than anything else, is what is going to get you through all this. We're going to do what we can. We're going to do our job. Uh, but it was great to see the teamwork. Uh, it, was, uh, it was very heartwarming. Uh, Supervisor Robert Lovingood was there yesterday. So was our uh, Chief Executive Officer Gary uh, McBride. Uh, we'll continue to be present in, in, uh, in Trona. And even when we aren't there, uh, we're listening. And uh, we're here to meet your needs. So thank you again for being here. Thank you. The next speaker would be Cal OESPIO, Terry Murhado. Good afternoon. My name is Terry Maharado. I am the Emergency Services Coordinator for uh, Southern part of Region 5, which and includes Kern County. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for welcoming me into your community and getting the opportunity to speak with you uh, for a few minutes. Uh, as the chief said earlier, we have now are phasing out of our response phase and rolling into our recovery phase. Um, while I apologize, I don't have any specifics on uh, the different programs that we will uh, be rolling out here in uh, Kern County, uh, primarily here in Ridgecrest. Um, they are coming. What I can do is please encourage you, uh, the chief spoke about it earlier, uh, to call the city at the 760-499-5083 or utilize the email at quakedamage at ridgecrest-ca.gov. This is the, the best way that the city and then in turn the county and the state who need the information for the residents of Kern County and Ridgecrest who have damages to your home. So please utilize those two entities and get us the information so we can start the recovery process rolling. Um, again, I just want to reiterate, I know the governor has been out here. Uh, Mark Ghirarducci, our uh, director of Cal OES, has been out here. And California is committed to helping the residents um, of the communities that have been affected. Uh, by the earthquakes. Um, but again, now's a good time to sit down your children, your family members, make a plan. Make sure you have your, medica your maintenance medication that you're going to need. Make sure you have a supply. Everybody needs a go kit that if it happens to be an emergency that you're able to get out with your family, that you have the necessary items with you or have stored at your home. As the chief said, 72 hours worth of water, uh, 72 hours worth of food, and don't forget our pets. Sometimes, whoops, excuse me, sometimes we forget that we need to have those items for our pets also. We think of our children, we think of um, people with access and functional needs or our elderly that are in our homes, but please also remember uh, the pets. Um, also, for those of you who live here in Kern County, please sign up for emergency alerts. Kern County has a wonderful program. Uh, it's called Ready Kern. You can eagle, either Google Ready Kern, and I tested it right before I came tonight. It, the first uh, line that you'll click on and under Google is kerncountyfire.org, and it will show you right there step by step. You can register and set up all your parameters on how you would like to be alerted, or you don't actually have to register a part of the program to sign up for the alerts. But I greatly encourage you to do that. You will be one of the first people um, that are notified if when emergencies are happening or directly after and what steps that you need to take. 
And then again, Cal OES, we have uh, a YouTube page, we have Facebook, we have Twitter uh, on there. If you uh, use any, utilize any of those social media or video uh, references, there are videos on how to be safe during earthquakes. Uh, we have quite a few items on wildfires. So I really encourage you, for those of you who have access to the uh, internet, both check uh, Kern County, your city of Ridgecrest, and then of course Cal OES to get any up-to-date information or uh, hints on how you can prepare yourself and your family um, before, during, and after emergencies. Thank you. Thank you. The Public Work Director, Bard Lauer. Good evening. My name is Bard Lauer. I'm your Public Works Director for the City of Bridgecrest. Um, what I wanted to talk a little bit about is, is what Public Works has been doing for you since the first two events. <clears throat> After the first earthquake, can you hear me or do I need to, is that better? All right, so I'll even lean in a little bit, how about that, okay. So what we've been doing since the first quake is we've been out uh, looking at roads. Um, we looked, all, all the arterials after the 6.4, we were shocked. There was little damage that wasn't there before the quake. Um, after the 7.1, though, we pulled in enough employees. We drove every single road in town. Uh, we looked at every road. We documented all the concrete damage. Um, so we went, made, wanted to make sure that, that you were safe and could get where you needed to go. We were out um, after the first one, like I said, until 1 in the morning or so driving, and then we went back and looked at it in the daylight to make sure we weren't, didn't miss anything. Um, since then, we opened up a, uh, a program for you to call in if you were worried about the condition of your house. Now, we're not saying, come look at my house. I want to know if it's okay. We're saying, look at your house. See if there's cracks that, that worry you. See if the roof looks out of kilter. See, you know, give us some idea when you call so we know what to ask questions about. All right, because what we'll ask you is, are the cracks offset? All right, so in other words, if they're flat across, quite often you're okay. If they're hairline, if they're paper width, again, you're quite often okay. But, you know, another thing would be the trailers that are completely off the jacks. Now, yeah, th those we need to come look at, all right? So, but please have a look at it. I mean, we've had calls from out of town. Well, you know, um, my mom's house is there. Can you go look? Well. No, call a neighbor, have, have the son come over and take a look at the house and then tell us what you see. And then we'll decide if we need to come over so that we can spend the time on houses we know we need to look at. Right? I mean, yeah, okay. So the, the chief talked about the, the, new, the new item uh, where you can email in. Uh, they've mentioned the email address twice, okay? So and it's, it's in the press release and it's on the, uh, the police's uh, I'm sorry, Facebook page. So you can find it there. Please use that one. Tell us what damage there is in your house. Now, I don't care on that one, whether you tell us it's a hairline crack here and there, whatever. We need to know about all the damage when you send something in on the, on the email page, all right? That's good, because then we can keep track of all the damage, put together a better assessment for Cal OES, all right? However, um, if you're using... Uh, an email, and you are worried about your house, include in the text that you'd like somebody to call you to, make, you know, to come out and do an inspection. We will. We'll do an evaluation over the phone, and we'll, uh, we won't set up an appointment, because what we'll do is we'll rate it by priority, but you will be called before we do come out and do it. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? All right. Um, if you don't do, fa don't do emails, um, there, there's a phone number in the same places that the email address was. You're, you're welcome to call. If you're incredibly worried, okay, I mean, like the hot side of the house has collapsed a little bit. You have a loose chimney, okay, that's a good one, okay, that could fall in your neighbor's house. 
Those are worth calling about and emailing about, okay? Do both. That way we'll, we'll get it for sure, all right, fairly soon. One of the things we've been doing today is the Cal OES group. Well, let's start back. When we first started that program, we had a bunch of inspectors come in from the county. We, uh, building inspectors, we want to send a special thank you out to all of them that have been up here away from their families. Um, that's great. Many of them are Cal OES safety people, which is great. Um, we had the Cal OES guys that come in and determine damages come up today. There was a group that went out with the schools. There was a group that went up to the college. And there's a group that, that came with us to look at damage to our roads, which there really weren't many, and to go out and look at the, at the wastewater plant. Now, how many of you had any trouble flushing the toilet? Not a one of you, right? That's because the wastewater plant has worked the entire time. We've had an, an employee in particular that's been out there every single day making sure it's working. We had a couple of blown pipes to begin with. Um, the Navy's been really good when the water and the power went out to get us water and power back, but we have emergency power so we can stay up and going. I know I'm talking too loud. I'm sorry, guys. I just want to make sure you know. So you, you, we're not having any trouble with the wastewater plant, so you're, you're all set there. So um, at this point in time, I'll stay around. I'll be sitting right down here in the corner afterwards if you want to talk. If all you're asking is for an inspection, please use the email site. Um, and, 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 uh, but if you just want to ask questions, I'll be around afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Up next would be the Red Cross PIO, Mimi Taylor. Teller. Thank you, thank you. But truly, I want to thank everybody in Ridgecrest and Trona and the entire Kern County support team and community that's welcomed us. We couldn't do our job if you weren't as welcoming and gracious as you guys have all been. So thank you for letting us serve you. And on that note, we wanted to recognize there's many partners who have supported us through our support of your community. But especially from Kern County, we've had the Victims Relief, the Adventist Disaster Services, and Marley's Mutt. So thank you so much, uh, one of our many partners. So I rolled into town for this cute little 6.4 earthquake late on Friday evening, two hours before we had a not so cute 7.1. So I was here with uh, my staff, and the shelter was empty. And within an hour, it wasn't so empty. Uh, we had people flowing in through the evening, people were who, who were very, very scared, very nervous, and people just looking for a sense of community. And I was happy that we were able to offer. We were all happy we were able to offer that to the community of Ridgecrest. Unfortunately, Trona was cut off initially with the uh, road closures. And as soon as your road closures opened up yesterday. We had Red Cross vehicles prepared and ready to roll into town. Uh, today we had four vehicles out there. We were supplying water, cleanup kits, and some snacks. So we will be out back there again tomorrow. And I understand some of you will be coming here for some hot meals. And the registration desk is through that door, so please start there. Once you arrive, we have air conditioning. If anybody needs a place to stay, behind me is our dormitory. We have cots and blankets and hot showers. And uh, we are ADA compliant. So we are welcoming everybody and anybody who needs our support and our services. Um, we also will be providing emotional support. We have our own team members providing these services, and the county has also been providing similar services. So as other folks have mentioned, we have all been through a disaster. Don't underestimate that. It seems disasters happen to other people. This time it's happened to you. And your fear and your concerns are very real. So we're here to support that. Let us help you with it. And lastly, again, to echo what some have said, my friend Terry from Cal OES, prepare. Please let this be a reminder, prepare. Before the events happen, you want to have water, your go kit, a family plan, a plan for your pets. When it happens, duck, cover, 
hold on, and afterwards, make sure your gas is off, your family is okay, and then turn to the Red Cross if you need to and your community at large for support. Thank you, everybody, and take care. Excellent. Thank you. So again, this is a little bit long process. We're almost done on this portions with speakers. Everybody that is standing, I thank you for your patience on this. I know this. there's a lot of information in here that we want to get to you. So we want to make sure that you get everything and what you need. Next speaker from uh, Marley's uh, Miracle Mutt, Catherine Mackey. So Marley's Mutts, uh, our Miracle Mutts have partnered American uh, Red Cross, and we came out today to play with some kids. We had, did some arts and crafts today, um, lots of games, and just to kind of alleviate some of the uneasiness that maybe some of the kids were feeling. Um, we're happy to be here and happy to be a part of um, helping this community come back together. And so we look forward to helping out your community and also working with American Red Cross. Thank you. Next up would be Kern Behavioral Health, Ivan Carrasco. Hello, my name is Ivan Carrasco. I'm with Kern Behavioral Health and Recovery Services. And uh, we have been working with the Red Cross to provide mental health support. Uh, as everyone will probably mention and notice, this is a crisis and you all have done an amazing job with this. I want to say that it's been interesting coming in because you guys don't look as panicked as I felt coming in. And so keep up the good work. It's, uh, I've heard someone say, keep in communication with your neighbors. Communication is a huge portion of this. There's a lot of fear and we're worried about this because we don't know what's going to happen. And so today I'm going to go over a couple of the different items that we have available to provide support. Uh, we have a team here. We will have a team throughout the week wearing green shirts. We are here to provide mental health support to you. Uh, feel free to come up and ask any questions. It's not just about mental health. Just if you need to be linked to something, talk to someone, just have a, a conversation. Please feel free to come up and talk to us. Um, we have a couple different support lines. We have the crisis hotline. Apparently this one's not working anymore too. Um, we have the crisis hotline at 1-800-991-5272. We have the local mental health provider, or behavioral health provider, which is College Community uh, Services at 1760-499-7406. I'll repeat this again, I probably so, um, so you can get them again. And then finally, we have the Crisis Stabilization Unit at 760-463-2880. So uh, College Community Service is your local uh, behavioral health provider. And so if you need anything from them, feel free to contact that number, which again is 760-499-7406. And the stabilization unit is just if you need something, you're kind of feeling a little more intense. These earthquakes have put a lot of pressure on all of you. Uh, it is an anxiety provoking thing. And as everyone mentioned, it's a normal reaction to have a response to this. And so if you feel the need that you need a higher level of support, please call the 760-463-2880. There are also several different services uh, that are available to you online. You have apps available, but one particular one I would like to mention is the Smart 911 app. It is a way for you to provide information directly to uh, local emergency response. So if something like this ever happens in regards to anything, they know what to look for. If you have an animal, if you have a sick parent, if you need medications, it's a way for them to have information ahead of time that will help them provide more effective prompter services. Uh, thank you all, you are all doing an amazing job and feel free to contact any one of us if you need any help. Thank you. Next speaker is Kern County Supervisor Mick Gleason from District 1. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll be quick. Uh, it's great to see so many people here. Uh, it, it was, it's been great to see so many people engaged in the process from uh, taking a tour of the devastation and the damage by, with Congressman McCarthy, uh, Senator Grove, and uh, Assemblyman Fong, to uh, conversations with the governor, to talking with the White House, uh, Senator Fe uh, uh, Feinstein's staff, Senator Harris's staff, everybody's engaged. 
Everybody wants to help. Everybody's looking for ways. And the common thread in all those conversations is how can we help? Let us know. So the job uh, uh, for us is to report those needs. And the job for you is to make sure that we understand what those needs are so that we can accurately uh, report those. So please get involved. Any damages, any issues, don't be afraid to come up and talk to somebody and report what's, what the situation is. And we'll come and, uh, and figure out what's going on. Um, I want to thank a couple of people. First, the, the most impressive, the two things that impressed me about this whole event is one, it's that it's, it's difficult to see the damage driving down China Lake Boulevard or driving through the neighborhoods in, in Ridgecrest. It's tough to see the damage, but we know it's there when you open the door. And that's one of the issues with earthquakes is that sometimes it's visible, difficult to see the, the, the visibly see the damage. But it's there, and we know that, and we're communicating those things to the, uh, to the, uh, to the proper authorities. That's one big item. The other big item, the second one thing, is i kinda got to guarantee you, Mayor Breeden has put together one heck of a plan. Her and her staff have been phenomenal in how they responded, how they are constantly uh, supporting this community. It's remarkable. Her whole staff. Her whole staff, including the chief. Uh, I want to a couple of real quick things. I want to send a special kudos to Kern County. I'm very proud of my Kern County. I'm very proud of the response to Kern County from the EOC to the firefighters, to the sheriff's department, to behavioral health, to public works departments, to environmental health, to public health, to uh, behavioral health. All these issues and all these departments have weighed in and are committed to seeing us through this event. Just because we have left the, the, this particular stage of this uh, disaster doesn't mean that we're fully through the whole process yet. We need to recover, and then we need to be prepared in case recovery changes it back into something else. And I just want everybody in this room to know that Kern County is fully, completely committed to seeing us all the way to the end zone. I want to also throw out a special kudo to the Red Cross. This is my second time uh, being with a, an emergency of this, this magnitude, one was with the uh, Erskine fire a couple years back. I'm sure many of you have first degree exposure to that. Uh, the American Red Cross is the best organization when it comes to this kind of stuff. These people are loving, they're caring, they're there, and they're fully committed to, uh, to you, the persons in need. So feel free to, uh, to participate with them. And when you see somebody at the Red Cross, or they're asking somebody for, to volunteer, or they need some donations, or whatever you can do, the Red Cross is a worthwhile organization. We're still not out of the woods. We know that. We know that there are dangers lurking ahead. We don't know what Mother Nature is thinking right now. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. But we knew, do know this. Mayor Breeden has us prepared, and I'm proud to be a, a member of this community. Thank you. Thank you. So I did want to forget one um, for PG&E, Eric Couric. Good evening, everybody. Um, first thing I want to say is, uh, as we responded here, what an amazing community that you guys have here. The support that you've shown us and our employees as uh, we've worked around the clock to assess our systems has just been amazing. So thank you for that. Uh, my name, sorry about that. My name is Eric Kurtz. I'm the director of gas operations for maintenance and construction for PG&E. And I'm also the director of the operations emergency center for this event. Um, I just want to give everybody kind of an update on what we're doing to assess um, our system. And first of all, the safety of our customers, employees, and the communities we serve is always gonna be PG&E's highest priority. PG&E has been on the ground uh, since the initial onset of the 6.4 that occurred on 4th of July. Uh, we mobilized employees up here immediately to begin assessments. Um, I'd like to clarify that PG&E uh, provides gas service to Ridgecrest, but we do not provide the electric services uh, in this territory. It's uh, Southern Cal Edison um, who I'm sure you've noticed been up here doing an amazing job as well. There's no major customer impacts that we've identified so far as a contribution to our assets. We have found um, not very many, but a few leaks that have already been repaired. Um, as some of you may know from the jackhammers that have been going off in the middle of the night, 
we've been responding immediately to all findings. Um, however, I just do want to make sure everybody understands this is still um, remains an active situation, and we will continue uh, to do the surveys on ground and through area patrol. We are doing visual flights over all of our gas systems as well as LIDAR flights um, to do uh, comparison visualiz visualization of any earth movement that may not be apparent from uh, walking on the ground. Um, we are evaluating the areas where the fault lines cross our facilities. Uh, we do have high pressure transmission lines outside the community um, that supply the community to the distribution system. There are two locations where there have been fissures that have opened up across the pipeline and we are doing evaluations on what the stress factors are on those pipes. We currently have determined um, that the condition is safe for operation. However, we are planning some excavations to do visual inspections on those lines as well. And um, as we move uh, throughout the system, uh, we'll be making any repairs uh, that we find um, at that time. Uh, we remain engaged with multiple agencies and stakeholders supporting the response effort, and we'll have more information to share in the coming days as we learn more. Uh, we are going to continue um, to survey every single service to every house and every main in the street for the entire system, and we will do that more than once. Um, as I'm sure you are all aware, we're still having a little bit of shaking here and there, um, so we'll continue those surveys to make sure that um, we don't have any additional issues that we may have missed the first time or any new uh, damages um, from any additional earth movement. I do want to give a little safety reminder. Um, for safety reasons, uh, there were a lot of gas services that were shut off at the meter. Um, some of them were shut off by customers, some by emergency services, your first responders, and some by pg e employees due to the conditions of the homes. Um, quite a few, uh, quite a bit of damage in the mobile home parks where we've done shutoffs on some heavily damaged buildings. Um, some of those shutoffs may, your houses may not appear to have any damage and you shut them off for safety reasons. Um, the one thing that I do want to say is please do not turn your own gas back on. Um, we have employees here uh, ready to respond um, should you need gas that are trained to do safety inspections of your appliances and validate that you do not have any house line leaks when we turn your services back on. Um, the one thing that I will give you, uh, the contact for that, if you do need um, a safety inspection of your appliances and your house lines uh, or your gas turned back on, please call 1-800-PGE-5000. That number again is 1-800-743-5000. Um, we do have employees that live and work in your community um, that immediately responded to this uh, even prior to us calling them to action. Um, so I do just want to say um, our hearts and prayers are with you all. We're here to serve. We're here to support. And uh, let us know if you need help, and we'll be there for you. Thank you. Next would be Assemblyman Fong. All right, let's try this. Does this work? All right. Well, I want to thank you all for being here. First, I want to commend the mayor. I want to commend Supervisor, uh, your police chief, Cal OES, all the first responders. Um, their response to this was tremendous. Uh, not many communities can say they've sustained uh, and, ser and, and per persevered through a 6.4, a 5.5, a uh, 7.1, and of course all those, uh, the smaller earthquakes um, that have occurred. And so I will first say this, we, the Ridgecrest, Trona, Indian Wells Valley, we're a family, and we take care of each other. And so no matter, <laughs> and so no matter what happens moving forward, we will walk alongside you every step of the way until everything is completed. 
And so for, I know there's a lot of anxiety and worry in the community right now. I've talked to a number of folks who've, who've lost their homes, uh, their mobile homes. I know they're trying to explain to their children um, you know, what's going on. And so there are services available. We will provide them for as long as necessary in this community to make sure that the anxiety uh, fades away as best as possible. But rest assured that we are here to help and to take care of everyone here in this community. Um, this community is a very special place to me. And so we will do whatever is necessary to make sure this community is rebuilt and is made whole. Um, so it is important, as, um, as the police chief said, that we understand all the damage and everything that is occurring has occurred over the past, uh, uh, past number of days. Um, we are uh, meeting with state officials, with federal officials. I've gotten off the phone with, with, with all levels of government to try to understand what's happening. So from the hospital to the base to everything in, within, within this area, um, as we understand everything that's happening and all the damage that needs to be uh, uh, fixed and, 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 um, and remedied, um, we need to make sure that we understand everything that's going on in the community. And so please email, um, me, uh, you know, use the email, use the website, um, you know, call um, uh, the city. And, and of course, let us know everything that's happening. And of course, if, if you have any questions uh, for our office, you're more than help, welcome to call. We have an open door policy. Uh, call our office, write, email. Our phone number is 661-395-2995. Uh, and you can reach us, of course, on social media and everything else that comes with that. Um, but you know, we have the Red Cross. For those veterans who are out there, we have the Vet Center here um, that will provide assistance as well. They are, they, they, you, you can see their, um, um, I guess, their RV. Uh, trailer out in front of um, uh, 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 out front of the Kermit McGee Center, but um, this community has supported our military. They've always risen to the occasion, and I have no doubt in my mind that you will tackle and rise to the occasion for the challenge that has occurred before us today. And so, for me, I just want to be here to support you. I know that all of us here want to make sure that everything is done to make sure that you're taken care of. And if anything is not happening, you let us know, and we'll take care of it for you. So thank you, and God bless. Thank you. Uh, for Senator Shannon Groves Rep, Tracy Reynolds. Hello. Thank you for having us here today. I just wanted to come up and introduce myself. I'm Tracy Reynolds, and I'm the Constituent Services Director for Senator Shannon Grove. I'm joined by Dominic Hyden, who is our field representative. Many of you have probably recognized him. He's been here since Friday, been in the community, been with you all, and he has done a good job. Um, we want to start by saying thank you to all the first responders who have sacrificed their time to ensure the safety of our constituents. That's you. Um, we have been so moved by the coordinated efforts of local, state, and federal agencies that have all rallied together during this uh, state of emergency. Mayor Breeden, Vice Mayor Martin, Supervisors Gleason and Levingood, and all the heads of the agencies and local law enforcement has kept our office up to speed and have been responsive to all of our inquiries, and we are very appreciative of all involved. I wanted you to put a face to, to a name so you know who to contact if you need services of any kind. Uh, you've heard from everybody else that you can get services from. You can also get services from, from us. Uh, as you look for assistance rebuilding your homes, um, replacing vital documents, requesting assistance with state agencies, and even finding a ride to the DMV, I am happy to help in any way, shape, or form. Our office works closely with Assemblyman Fong, Congressman McCarthy, and all local electeds, and we are here to help. I have packets with me that detail what constituent services we provide and includes my contact information. So please stop by the, the table out front and uh, to speak to Dominic or I and uh, let us know what your needs are or let anybody here know what your needs are. We are all here to help you. Um, we know it will take time and money to rebuild, and rest assured, Senator Grove will be here with you every step of the way. Our constituents are the most giving in the state. Just today, they poured into our district uh, office with donations of water that will be being delivered tomorrow um, here and over in... Um, 
Trona, I'm, I'm so sorry, over in Trona. I, we actually have four semi-trucks um, that are on their way to Ridgecrest and Trona right now, uh, full of water. We want to help facilitate any, any needs that you have, so please contact us. Our phone number is 661-323-0443. And as Senator Grove also gives out her cell phone number, I do too. So if you need direct contact, my cell phone number is 661-428-0821. Thank you for having me here today. I look forward to connecting with you all. Next, Congressman McCarthy's representative, Clayton Fowler. Good evening. Like you said, my name is Clayton Fowler. I'm the field representative for Ridgecrest and portions of Eastern Kern for the congressman. The congressman has been uh, monitoring this situation very closely, working with our local, state, and, and federal partners. Um, for more details, please contact our Bakersfield office or for assistance, our Bakersfield office at 661 327-3611. We will also be um, across the parking lot on Tuesday at the City Hall. If you'd like to speak in person for mobile office hours, um, we'll be there at 1030. Um, so please feel free to reach out to our office or any one of the other elected officials' offices. We all work very closely together and we'll get you the support that you need. Thank you. Next would be Mayor Peggy Breeden. I can't say thank you enough. We are an amazing community. I know what most of you are going through. I don't know what all of you are going through, but I know we have heroes in this community. Heroes who have done for others before themselves. People who have said, count me in. I'm willing to work. I'm willing to donate. I'm willing to fix up. I am there for all of you. I am going to ask some of you to please, if you have family that is out of the area and they don't know your neighbor's phone number, give your neighbors, get your neighbor's permission and give that number to them. We've had so many calls saying, I can't get a hold of my mother. I don't know what's going on. Please give that to your immediate family so we can avoid that situation and the worry that brings to them and to the families involved. The family couldn't get a hold of one of his neighbors. He went down there and the lady was transported to, um, out of the area to a hospital. She is alive today because somebody cared enough to say, count me in, I will check. That is our job, that is your job, this is this community's job. And I'm asking you to listen to the people who are here offering services. They are here for you. This is your time to say, I need help, help me. And if you don't tell anybody, it is on you, you must respond and let us know what you, can, what you need and how you can be helped. There is so many opportunities. There is community banks that are offering low cost um, interest rate loans. There are volunteer groups that are saying, I will go out and fix your home. We've had an offer of $50,000 anonymously of people who need help to fix their home that don't have insurance or their deductible was too large. I'm asking if you need something, it is your job now to speak. I also want to say one of our largest heroes, no, that's not fair. <laughs> Chief, you are not large. But 
You and your team are amazing. Our incident commander, <laughs> Chief. In my mind, he's our largest hero. I thank you. I want to say one more thing. We are a great community, and you know what? Ridgecrest rocks! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are amazing. Thank you. Ridgecrest rocks. Thank you. Okay, before we go on to questions and answers, uh, this is going to be hard to beat. That was pretty awesome, Mayor. <laughs> um, I have a, we just received a paper earlier from Searless Valley Minerals. This is a facility recovery announcement to all Searless Valley Minerals Incorporated employees. Following the recent earthquakes, SVM is working with its insurance providers and engineer firms to evaluate the best approach to make those repairs needed to resume full productions safely and quickly. Concurrently, SVM is coordinating with government agencies to restore essential services to its facilities and the Trona community. Only essential personnel are being granted access to the SVM facilities at this time. Only those employees who have been contacted by their managers directly will be granted access to the SVM facilities during the periods of Monday, July 8th of 2019 through July 10th. If you have not been contacted by your direct supervisor manager, you can presume that you have not been requested to appear at the SVM facilities during the periods. All SVM employees will be paid during these three days periods according to their regular work schedule. Only those employees whose name appear on an authorized entry list will be granted access to the facilities by security. All entrance to and exit from the facilities will be through the security main gate. And this is from the Director of Government Relations and Public Affairs, Arzell Hale. So we're going to start with question and answers. Um, obviously, we've got to have a little bit of, of a time limit here. We have been a lot, I'm, everybody that's been standing, I really appreciate, again, the patience and what you've been doing to be able to listen to a lot of the great information that our speakers have been given. So when we give a question, just please raise your hand. We'll send over a person to talk. At least about a minute of a question, if we can, per question and answer. We will have, um, at the end of this, we will have an area of time to where you can have a one-on-one -on -one questioning with all our speakers. Our speakers will be out here. We'll have some of our PIOs here to be able to answer questions if needed. So. Uh, good evening, everyone, and yes, we can do this. Um, my question is, uh, we, with the lack of transportation, public transportation, for people that are disabled, we don't have the, oh, the door-to-door, -door. and f even to get to a bus stop is difficult. Cabs are expensive if you can get one. Is there something that can be done about that? Some kind of carpooling to get us through this? Okay. And that's so a huge question, I know. It is. Um, we'll see if, uh, Chief. So the question is, is uh, people that are disabled in transportation for bus transportations on the area, is there a way that we can have somebody there to be able to assist with any type of public transportation? Absolutely. Um, to get here, was that correct? Say it again. Well, it's transportation to get to these appointments. I haven't checked my house. You know, I've wanted to wait till it stopped shaking. Sure. That's not going to happen for a while. Um, let's be real. But, um, like, I need my house inspected. My back's broken. I can't get up and inspect it. I can't sure. probably climb under either. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, what we've offered um, several people that we've called to either get here or back to the residence. Well, it must be me with these mics, but uh, if you need a, a wheelchair, then we've got, we've, we can use our transit buses. If it's something like that, 
and uh, then I'll take you in my car. I don't care. Um, well, if not mine, then uh, we will uh, we will figure it out. Everyone, everyone heard that, right? You got it. Hey. Thank, thank you. Just call. I'll. Uh, we will get you. If you need a ride here for the meetings or whatever, we'll figure it out. So even if I have to come pick you up myself. So. My name's Teresa O'Malley. Teresa, nice all right. I, I got you. No problem. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jonathan Schmidt. I live in Trona. Um, I'm going to make this real quick. Uh, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, uh, utilities, Southern California Edison and uh, PG&E, for coming out and doing a really good job getting our power and gas back on. Uh, next thing, this, uh, the, there's a bunch of people here in the Ridgecrest community that have helped out tremendously bringing over supplies, water, stuff like that. Um, if there's anybody else, I know that there's been a lot of questions about what we need over there. Uh, direct those questions to our Trona Neighborhood Watch page on Facebook. That's where we're directing our communication. Uh, so if you have any questions about what we need and you would like to help and donate, please feel free to get on that page. Uh, throw those questions out there. We'll answer them. We'll uh, get you an idea of where to take it to. Um, and uh, thank you for those that have already helped. You guys are amazing. Uh, the representative from uh, San Bernardino. Uh, after this, I'm going to get with you. I've got a list of stuff that I know we need okay. uh, right off the bat. All right, good. And we want to make sure we want to, if you'll let us, uh, uh, help use your page to push out information that we have. Send it to you. You can push it out. There's another uh, Trona page that has a lot of traffic. We'd like to get information out. I know the people in the community... Uh, you have a lot of followers on your page, and we'd like to work with you on that. Thank you. We'll All right. Here. I'll come see you in a minute. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Bob Stark. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm a manufactured home uh, park owner and uh, a dealer, and I was going through the parks, and there are quite a few homes on the ground that are they're not inhabitable. Is there any kind of help for uh, those people? So Chief McLaughlin will be answering that for you. Um, we've reached out. This became a topic uh, when uh, Congressman McCarthy was here. And uh, because mobile home parks are a different, they fall under some different guidelines, so be, it can become confusing. So uh, Lauren Skidmore I believe uh, uh, Mr. Fong's office, she, that's who she works for. She is becoming well aware of a lot of these laws and her and I have been talking back and forth on it. So we will have some answers on what we can do with the mobile home parks. So uh, we will be pushing that information out as we get it. Oh, he's got some. Um, we have actually meetings in Sacramento this week to address this very issue. So we're gonna to try to find some remedy to try to make sure that we get these mobile home parks, uh, at least maybe some resources there to, 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 to get them fixed as quickly as possible. We're working on uh, this week, we're meeting with some folks in Sacramento to try to resolve a lot of these regulations and, and try to get some, some relief to fix these mobile homes. My name is Javed, I'm a small local business owner. My question is, uh, who are the appropriate person, uh, the losses we have because of this unfortunate event? Any city, state, or federal government is doing something, the loss we have because of this unfortunate event. So whoever the appropriate person, please let us know and work for that. Uh, the local assistance center, which will be open shortly, is, is going to be especially your one-stop shop uh, because you're wanting to know which of the uh, city, county, state, federal 
what are all of the things that are available to you, including insurance companies? That will be your opportunity to, to go in there, speak one-on-one, -on -one, sit down with each of them, fill out the forms with individuals that can assist you with those forms, and that way you can do it in a streamlined and efficient process, and that will also help you get back to normal. Uh, Norman Alexander. Um, we went through a 6.4, a 7.1. I don't care about church and state separation. Can we have a moment of silence and prayer? Uh, thank you. My name is Frank Montenegro. I've lived here 10 years with my family. Um, I just got off the line a little while ago with a friend. My, my home was pretty badly damaged. It was knocked off the foundation. Uh, aside from that, I, I just got off the line with uh, uh, a chaplain friend of mine, uh, a fire, fire chaplain. Uh, he's been with, working with uh, Billy Graham's uh, Samaritan's Purse for 13 years. They have a team coming out probably next Monday or Tuesday. Is there a phone number, sir, that I can give them so that they can know what's needed prior to coming down? Thank you. Thank you. Getting my steps in. So yes, just have him call the, the police department um, and have him ask for Captain Dampier and he will set that up and he can notify him or even if you want my email address is on the city webpage you could do that also and i will pass that information and and communicate back and forth with them uh, just know that right now i'm probably getting about 400 a day so i will get back as soon as i can thanks really quick we also have uh, steve uh, if you want to talk directly to them these are chaplains from kern county and they will be providing it. So if you want to, sorry, if you want to connect directly with them, they will be able to give you more information on those types of services. Okay. Hi, my name's Chris. I am too disabled. I have to walk 30 minutes to a bus stop to catch transit. Um, is there a way that they can come door to door for us disabled that live 30 minutes from a bus stop like this? elderly lady asked yeah just like we told Teresa when we're having the meetings when the LAC is open give us a call we will figure out a ride for you okay um, and please notify us what kind of assistance you need so that we can bring the proper vehicle whether if, if we have to get a hold of uh, Bards guys and bring a bus we'll do that and same offer goes to you if I got to bring my car I'll bring it so thank you. So we have time for one to two questions left, and then after that, we'll close out. I'm just curious, my name's Shelly. If all the services you're offering, are they free? <laughs> Chief? <laughs> just stay up there, Jed. Question again, please. Yes, they are. Um, services are free. Sorry, I didn't see where the question came from, otherwise I would have. Oh, yes, thank you. Next question. <laughs> What's that? Can I come in my personal vehicle? Honey? Uh, I'm going to need a bigger budget. Where at? Yes, sir. My name's uh, Yusuf O'Day. I'm a resident of Ridgecrest for 30 years. 
I want to thank everybody. Uh, thank first responders. For, thank our government officials for everything they've done. Thank the community of Ridgecrest uh, and all with their assistance. Uh, just some information. We have had uh, people from the local community drop off money to our uh, business at Beverage drive through We have about a 250 to $300 budget right now for any first responders, anybody that's come out to volunteer uh, from our uh, local officials for any drinks. I know you guys are out there in the sun, so we do have a budget there for you guys. And uh, if you guys also need any use of our parking lot or our area with your guys' vehicles, you guys are more than welcome to do that. So any first responders, more than welcome. There is a budget there from our local community that have made donations to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. So we have one for one last question. Hi, um, our whole neighborhood was the gas was turned off. When microphone. It's a PG&E question. She says she lives near Fairview and Lost Floors, and the gas was turned off in that area, and she's wondering when it would be turned back on. Uh, is it a mobile home park? Okay. So maybe come and give me your location after the meeting. I'll stick around for a little while to answer questions. You give me your address. Um, but generally, if you have issues with gas that needs to be turned on or off, uh, the 800 PGE 5000, um, we do have dispatchers that have been assigned directly for this incident. And uh, we have field personnel standing by here in town ready to go and um, see if we can turn it back on or not. Thank you. Uh, there's some differing situations out there that we have in the mobile home parks. We do have some mobile home parks that are on something called a master meter. So our services go to the master meter and the mobile home park owns the gas facilities within the park. Um, if there are buildings um, that have been red tagged, um, we'll have to have the mobile home park make those repairs before we can turn it back on. So it is a case by case basis. Um, but we did proactively shut some of those off after the 7.1 in anticipation for major damage in those parks. So um, feel free to call and we'll do the assessment and um, we can give you direct information for your specific location on um, information if it's your uh, landlord's uh, property that needs to be repaired before we can turn it on or if we can take action to make repairs to get you turned back on. We do have uh, crew is on site ready to roll too if, if we need to repair our facility. No, I, I just want to clarify, I had two or three people write in and say for those who couldn't be at this meeting, how could they see this and then the information officer is saying it's on the Ridgecrest PD site, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Since I don't know the answer, go ahead and email that to us and we will get it to the appropriate people. And then uh, once we find out, the I will uh, reach out and find that answer out. And uh, then we will put something out and get with the, oh, never mind. Here we go. He talks too much. <laughs> he might be lodged, but he talks too much. Yeah, but we'd be glad to hear if you call my office. We'll take care of you. I'm Mick Leeson, I'm the county supervisor, so let's work through the county, and we'll keep it that, that way that we can get to you quickly, resolve it quickly. So pass the word out there. If you're in the county and you have a problem, my office is your, your point of contact. Thank you. Okay, last question. Thank you. I just wanted to let all the first responders know that we really, really appreciate all of you who have come out. Um, I do have a question, though. With the growth that Ridgecrest has experienced in recent years, do you see a need for more than only two fire stations in our city? And when was the last time that was assessed? Chief? Thank you. I'll let uh, Chief Mitchell answer that one for you. 
you know, of course, we're always assessing that. Uh, currently, um, we do um, respond to the calls as we, we can with our two fire engine companies, but that's stuff that goes down to the city manager and our chief, and then also, of course, between the board of supervisors. Um, all I know is with the call volume we have, being local battalion chief, I know we're constantly bringing in resources to assist, uh, but I do know to answer your question, uh, we are looking to that. I do know with the natural disaster, the magnitude of 7.1 we were faced with, I feel like our men and women did an excellent job at trying to assess calls as they came on. So I know post, this is something we can always look at, learn from, and then adjust and adapt and see where we need to grow and if we need to add additional resources. Mayor. I wanted to say one more thing. In the process of wanting to thank all the alphabet soup agencies who were here, and I'm not going to name every single one of them, I did promise the Indian Wells Valley Water District, contrary to what some of you are reading on Facebook, they are up, working, there was no need to do anything, there was no interruption of service, and they are the agency that provides water to most of the Indian Wells Valley. So I thank them for their service and their ability to do that. Thank you, Mayor. So we're gonna close out. We have our lead PIO that's been here since day one. He's gonna close out this uh, issue. Go ahead, sir. Okay. You remember back in May when the big old weapon was exploding of the explosives for like the whole day and the whole night? I remember that. My house and ours is shut every time I was like a sonic boom kind of thing. Now they did this for a whole day and a whole night. I think maybe they created the disaster not knowing me, but I think maybe they created it. Okay. It's, it sounds frightening, but I missed it myself. But thank you for your concern. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you. So I wasn't going to get out of here, I guess, without saying something. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, one thing I would uh, definitely like everyone to know, I know that it, it didn't occur throughout the, the town hall meeting here this evening. Uh, but we have uh, Christina Camacho here who would like to uh, express something for our Spanish-speaking individuals in the community. Okay. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Este, aquí ahorita hay muchos recursos para que uh, ustedes puedan este, agarrar este, los números de teléfonos que son importantes si tienen este, uh, daños en sus propiedades, en sus casas, en sus hogares. Por favor, este, si tienen preguntas, yo voy a estar aquí en este lado este y vengan a verme y los, los ayudaré para poder este agarrar los recursos que necesitan ahorita hay agua hay este um, muchos este mucha gente aquí que les puede responder sus preguntas y yo voy a estar aquí como intérprete para poder ayudarlos a, a agarrar esa información muchas gracias So if you don't speak Spanish, she was explaining in Spanish, she's here for those who need a Spanish translator. So there we go. Uh, this will conc conclude the press, con the town hall rather, but I would like to say I am astonished at the resiliency of this community, but also uh, the sense of humor that somehow <laughs> is still here. And along with that, we need to clarify some marital status here, ladies. He's offering you a ride, but the chief of police is happily married. So, <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much for being here at the town hall meeting. We're still available for you. We'll be available in the days and weeks to come. Take advantage of this opportunity to speak to these individuals and to network with each other so that you can receive assistance from these agencies as well as your neighbor. And be safe and have a good evening.